Hello fellow riders and welcome back to Airhead Barn. Uh, long time no see. We are actually starting a new series of episodes where we are going to talk about upgrades to the common airheads. Uh, particularly here uh, I'll focus on some of the upgrades that uh, are very beneficial for these bikes. Uh, for my R75-7 and also R80 ST. At the end of the series I'll walk you through some of the basically all of the upgrades that I that I've done uh, to these two bikes. Uh, just uh, one thing to note is please don't expect some uh, cafe racer style upgrades here. I'm more on a purist side so for me upgrade needs to be uh, beneficial to the bike uh, handling. Uh, so in this first episode I'm going to focus on the brakes and this is particularly important for um, airheads that are before 81 that have uh, ATE uh, brake system installed like my R75-7. If you watched our uh, restoration episodes you would uh, you would notice that I went through the uh, whole uh, rebuild of master cylinder and uh, calipers. Uh, I put new Brembo uh, pads and, uh, and rotor. Uh, so everything was basically new regarding brake uh, system on that bike. Uh, however, uh, that those brakes were just not sufficient for the they cannot be compared definitely not to modern brakes but even to later Brembo brakes that were installed on um, 81 and newer models so for that reason I believe it's uh, it's important uh, to upgrade the brake system and this is particularly true because if you remember uh, our R75-7 actually um, uh, we installed a big bore kit, so 1000cc, which increased significantly torque and power of that engine, but the brake system remained the same. 75 came with only one rotor and one uh, caliper, so that was, that was just um, underpowered. Uh, on the other uh, hand, I could go with the route of putting another rotor and another calipers, and uh, changing the um, uh, master cylinder but I decided not to do it so there are several different options that you can you can take here in order to improve your brakes and what I decided to do is actually install the bigger rotor like 320 millimeters and also uh, modern calipers from uh, BMW um, S1000RR uh, very helpful for that was uh, Matt from R90X Design who provided me with the parts and in this episode I'm going to show you how essentially install um, that upgrade. Uh, just note on uh, these ATE models uh, this is not uh, plug and play installation it will require some of the modification of your um, uh, fork leg essentially we will need to uh, cut the ears so if you wanna uh, so essentially you won't be able to bring it back to the original stage if you are concerned about that and you will still like to install something like this order another uh, leg that you can keep uh, stored whenever you wanna uh, put things back to the original uh, shape uh, if that's a deal breaker for you, then uh, this uh, upgrade is, is definitely not for you. Uh, I'll also show in the next episode how I'm going to do it in my, on my r 80 st and over there it's really plug and play, you don't need to modify anything and you can always return it back to the original stage. So without further ado, let's proceed. Behind me I already have 320 uh, big rotor installed and uh, one thing to note when you are shopping around uh, you can definitely buy this on, on uh, RX, uh, R90X design website but you can also look on eBay 
there are plenty of these rotors and, and Matt can provide you uh, Ducati and other bike models that use this rotor or similar that can fit here and it can come up much cheaper. For instance, I was able to score two of these rotors that I'll use for this bike and my R80 uh, quite cheap on eBay and when I measure the, them they are, they are brand new. Actually, they were not even used. So I consider myself lucky. In the same time, uh, calipers usually they come in set. A uh, good thing about these two bikes that I have is that R75-7 has caliper mounted on uh, its left side and then R80 ST has it on the right side. So I actually bought a set of calipers and set of rotors and I can do both bikes in the same time. It's much cheaper than if you are buying um, a separate uh, just one caliper and one rotor. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, mounting the rotor is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially, what you would need to do is remove the uh, old rotor, and then there is a basically adapter, hub adapter, that you screw with the original um, nuts and, and bolts to the wheel, and then your rotor goes on on this adapter. Uh, I already have everything mounted here for my R75-7. This one will actually be used for our ATST with one additional spacer that goes here and that it's not needed for R75-7. Uh, when you mount these uh, bolts that are provided in a kit uh, uh, and when you attach the rotor to the adapter, make sure you use a blue uh, thread locker for that and uh, Matt can provide you all necessary uh, torque information. So that part is essentially uh, straightforward and, and really easy to do. Part that is not that much straightforward is actually uh, lower leg. So if you look at the adapter that was provided in the kit, essentially it cannot come inside. So these ears here are they don't allow this adapter to fully come inside where it's needed so in order to make this working you will need to cut this portion of um, like ear and that's the modification where if you decide to do it there is no way back so here i have basically lines where i need to cut uh, you can use Dremel tool for this, you can use um, angle grinder. Uh, I'm going to use just a regular hacksaw because that's where I'm most comfortable with and I hopefully am not going to cut too much. Basically you move from, from essentially from this edge, you go half inch out and that's where you are going to cut it. And then this line basically follows this line here and you do the same on, on both ears and hopefully uh, uh, we will have a straight cut with a hexo. Uh, later we can sand it a bit and uh, that will give us enough clearance actually to mount this adapter and then on top of the adapter we are going to mount this beautiful caliper that came from BMW uh, S1000RR. Okay, uh, so let's proceed with cutting the lac.
Okay, so after cutting and sanding it with sand block, we can actually uh, dry test the adapter. Uh, adapter is uh, directional, so this part is essentially beveled compared to this one and that faces out. And this is how it's going to be uh, fitted. The reason why you always need to uh, cut it a bit more, not to make it completely flush with the adapter, so it does have a bit of uh, wiggle here, so you can adjust the calipers properly. Okay, that looks great to me. And now let's install everything. One th thing to keep on your mind, you can totally do this without this assembly uh, if you have a fork on a bike. The reason uh, why I'm doing it uh, like this is because I'm going to install uh, Toaster 10 uh, upper uh, triple yoke and in that case I'll need to properly align my forks and it was much easier to remove than uh, fork leg and actually do everything on a wise than on a bike but it's totally doable to do it on a bike as well okay just going to grease this thing tiny bit more okay this bushing Adapter. Slides in. And finally, our eccentric shaft should also be properly greased. Okay, this one is all the way in and allows us to adjust the adapter. That's why I'm not going to cap it at this moment because I want to adjust uh, calipers properly. Okay. Awesome. And now we should be able to mount calipers on this adapter. Okay, here they are. Bolts, uh, I'm going to put antices on them. Okay. Always a good idea to do this on um, caliper bolts. Ok, 
Okay, and now calipers can go on top. And we will torque everything to 18 newton meters. Okay, so next thing I'm going to install the brake fluid hose and I have here uh, new copper crush washers and this is how it goes. So for this caliper, uh, this Benio bolt goes to 24 uh, Newton meters. Put the cap on. And finally, what we are going to do is replace uh, brake pads. So even though this caliper came with brake pads they are used and it's always good idea when you are uh, doing this kind of work is to replace brake pads so I have here a new completely new set of uh, Brembo sintered brake pads for this caliper and I'm just going to use a tab of uh, brake uh, grease so they don't squeal Before installing them, we will need to clean them. Okay, that's it. Now we are going to mount everything back on a bike, uh, bleed brakes, and I'm going to report the end result, but this definitely looks amazing. Now let's actually proceed with installing uh, four clacks. Okay, so to do that, okay, first thing I'm going to put a tiny bit of grease on uh, seals now we want to put crush washers here on a uh, damper rods and in order for them to stay in place I'm using uh, bearing grease You just need a little bit because bearing grease is quite tacky and then keeps it in place while you are installing fork legs. Okay. 
this one. Okay, it's time to complete this interesting brake upgrade project and uh, the remaining part is actually put the wheel back on and uh, bleed uh, uh, brakes. Uh, we are going to put uh, fresh brake fluid and for bleeding purpose um, I'm going to use this power bleeder actually it's pretty uh, nice uh, tool to have for um, a single person uh, a break bleeding operation. Okay, so now we are going to put a fresh brake fluid in and bleed the brakes. Uh, here I still don't have a cap on this uh, uh, eccentric shaft and the reason for that is I want to be able to fine adjust uh, this new caliper so it sits exactly in the middle and it's not moving as I'm pressing the brakes. Okay, so first what we are going to do is I'm going to hook up this guy without any brake fluid just to see if I have any leaks. I'm going to pressurize the system, maybe like to uh, 5 uh, psi, between 5 and 10 should be fine. And uh, if there are no leaks then it means that everything is uh, in great shape and we can go ahead and fill it with fluid. Okay, this is seven and a half and I don't hear any leaks, which means that system is in a great shape and we can go ahead and, and fill it with uh, brake fluid.
with that, uh, I believe we are done with this uh, upgrade project. It's actually time to test out how this performs and I'll definitely report uh, my results. Okay, fellow riders, it's time to test out these new brakes that we have. Wow, this is already amazing. Ooh, this is super smooth, two finger operation, great feeling. You can actually modulate it compared to the old one. Oh my god, I'm amazed. This is one of the best upgrades I did for this bike. Finally, we have really great stopping power. Thank you so much, Matt from R90X Design. This was definitely worth of doing. Wow, unfortunately camera is not showing smile on my face. Wow, this is terrific. <laughs>